Hi, everyone. And it is Monday, my favorite day. Why? Because it is Mothers of Multifamily. And I have, oh my goodness, I, I was just telling her, I, I have a girl crush on this lady. She is fantastic. Her name is Jillian Sadoki. And oh my goodness, welcome, Jillian. I am so happy to have you here. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I, I don't know. I've never been so excited to be on a podcast because it's like where I'm talking about two of my favorite things, being a mom, which is my most favorite thing, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, real estate. Well, this is the perfect show for you, but just a little bit about J Jillian before we get into it. So Jillian is, like she said, she's a mommy first, but she is also one of the country's leading experts on Regulation A+. Since 2008, Jillian has submitted multiple Regulation A plus offerings, circulars to the Securities Exchange Commission, SEC, for approval, making her one of the few attorneys familiar with the law prior to the changes under the JOBS Act. Since the JOBS Act, Jillian has assisted multiple companies and entrepreneurs to realize their fundraising goals through crowdfunding uh, 506C and Regulation A. Jillian also continues to specialize in transactional legal matters such as private placement memorandums. You know what? I'm going to have Jillian tell you guys <laughs> all about this because it's going to come off of her, out of her mouth so much better than me. She is basically... <laughs> Ladies, she's fantastic. You want to know anything about the legal matters of real estate and multifamily? She is the woman to go to. She is also the author of the highly rated book, The Crowdfunding Myth, which debunks the multiple myths surrounding crowdfunding and teaches the reader how to effectively crowdfund their securities offering. So welcome, Jillian. I'm so- Thank you. So excited to have you here. So my I'm one excited question, to be here. <laughs> one question. Yay. I can't wait. And I can't wait to like ask you. I like you how we kind of coordinated our outfits too. We did. We did. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell everybody that was planned. This is, this, is, this is what women do. We like, we plan podcasts together. We mother together. It's, it's so funny. And this is before we getting, even get into the, into the question because I'm the queen of tangents. I loved the last video you posted. One of the last videos you posted Ladies, if you haven't seen this video, it's on Facebook, and she's talk and Jillian's talking about the rules of um, oh, what was it? Why am I blanking on? She was talking. She's basically talking about rules on multifamily, and yeah. in the background, you hear her son just playing along, and she's mothering. Jillian's mothering while giving this very important information, and I was just like, boom, that <laughs> is that is mothers of multifamily in in. And I don't know, I think it was like a seven minute video. It was yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I, somebody asked me a question earlier in the day and, um, I, and it's a question that gets asked a lot is about, you know, um, the difference, not the difference, but like how to talk to different types of investors and, and what you should be saying to them from a legal perspective. And I just started talking about it and my son and I were watching, uh, I, I happened to be at an event, um, a mastermind event and and we were watching the wait staff set up a party on the beach that we were going to be attending later yeah. and he in the middle of the video started kind of wandering into <laughs> the the setup and i was so fearful that he was going to just take one of the tablecloths and try to do a magic trick <laughs> <laughs> so i had to interrupt my little my little <laughs> advice with telling him, hey, 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 move back. Fortunately, his dad was over in the corner and he kind of like brought him away. So. <laughs> but still the fact that you kept on going. Oh, you were talking about pre-existing relationships. That's which, right, yeah. Which is key, key ladies so. and gentlemen. It's key information, but you can also do multifamily while taking care of your son. So Yeah, why not? So back, okay, to my question, which yeah. is, ties in everything. How do you do it? How are you one of the nation's top, top lawyers. And how do you balance that or unbalance that with motherhood? How do you do it? Well, first of all, you have to have a great support system. And, and I have that both at home and at work. So um, if you don't have a great support system, dump whatever system you have and get one. Um, that's key. Like my husband, a, a perfect example is yesterday, my son, um, forgot a piece of homework, um, at home. And, you know, our, 
a lot of times with, uh, with our kids, we're like, listen, if you forget it, that's on you. There's, we're not going home to get it for you. But lately, um, this particular son of mine has been working really, really hard to get his grades up and really wants to do a good job. So it was not my place at that point in time to tell him, you're out of luck. And I said, uh, but, but I had a meeting. I had a lot of meetings yesterday um, and I had to be there. So I could not go home and, and also get to work on time. And so he called my husband and my husband jumped right in the car and brought him his homework. And so that's the, the kind of support system I'm talking about. Like without hesitation, um, my husband said, yeah, I'll, I'll get this done. And the same time my husband was, you know, getting my uh, almost five-year-old, my four-year-old um, off, off to school. Was he going to school? Oh no, he threw him in the car and, and brought him with him too. So he's at home taking care of that as well. Um, and then I also have a great support system at work. And, and when I say, Hey, I've got these things that I have to do with the kids. They, they, they get it. They understand. Uh, most of the, most of the people in my office, almost all of all, everyone um, that I work with is, is a parent. Um, so they get it. And uh, they are very forgiving when it comes time for, for kids stuff. Um, and, and another thing is I prioritize, uh, I don't necessarily prioritize big things, although I, vacationing is very, very important to me and my family. And that's how I kind of like make up for a lot of the other stuff that might not get done. But um, I also prioritize the really, really small things or seemingly small things. For example, driving my kids to school every day as much as I can, so long as I'm not traveling is, is super, super important to me. Okay. So you just gave us so much value and just what I, I think that it felt like it was a half an hour of information. Oh, sorry. That was, no, 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 <laughs> but it, it was like three minutes of just condensed amazingness. So let's, let's jump back just a little bit. So the first thing I want to like point into is like you, you kind of cringe when you say, Oh, those things that might get forgotten. Yeah. It's, Hit on that a little bit because you could see like a little bit of the mom guilt kind of like seep <sighs> into your body. So let's talk. Yeah, about I suffer from that a lot. I have to. I have to admit. Um, and and rightfully so. It's deserved guilt. <laughs> um, uh, I you know I had like last night we sat down for dinner. We don't. Uh, we have dinner every night. However, a lot of times my kids get home from school. They're a little like. Blah, and they just want to play with each other. So they won't sit down with my husband and I eating dinner. We'll have dinner there. We'll have it ready. And he and I will sit down. But last night, my middle son was very, was hungry and he sat down and he just barfed all over me in terms of like, not actual, like telling me, all the stuff that was going on at school. And like, just, he was like a, a, a freight train of information. <laughs> and I realized like I, and, and I always make a point not to bring my phone to the dinner table. I leave it somewhere so I can't even reach it or even look at it. But I realized how much that kid needs me to like zero in on him and pay attention. And I can't tell you how many times I'm not where I'm on the phone um, where I'm distracted, where, you know, and, and not just, not just like looking at my phone, but also like on the phone or whatever. And, and, and they get ignored. And I do the same thing to my, to my husband a lot too. So it's, it's, you know, the little things like driving him to school in the morning, that's, I try to make up with, with making sure I do that every day. And then also we take, like I said, we do a lot of vacations. Um, that trip that you saw in Mexico, that was a business trip, but I made a point to to take the whole family because I'm not going to go to Mexico without them. <laughs> no, of course not. And the thing is, I mean, you might be giving yourself grief about that, but listen to your words and ladies, listen to Jillian's words. Like every time she says, yes, I'm, I know that I need to zero in and do this for my son. And sometimes I don't, but you are, you are yeah. <laughs> taking the time and you're putting in the work and you're making sure your family has the life that you you know that they deserve and you know the only way that that's going to happen is if you work and play and find that i'm i'm starting to call unbalance kind of like an unbirthday cuz yeah 
you know, you know, as well as I do, there's no such thing as balance. There's no such thing as, I, oh my God, I love the fact that you said that because <laughs> there is no such thing. Like if you want to get to some point A to point B, and I always think of Mal Malcolm Gladwell and outliers. Like, I don't know if you've ever read that book or know anything about it, but his, his whole thing is like, if you want to become an expert in something, you have to do it ten, for 10,000 hours. You have to commit 10,000 hours to something. There's no balance in 10,000 hours. So there's no balance. There's just no balance. If you want to be like a really good mom, you got to be really unbalanced in, in doing that. If you want to be really good at multifamily, you got to be really unbalanced in doing that because, you know, like if you're not r underwriting, you know, so many deals a week, you, you can't just expect to underwrite one deal and Poof. voila, you're going to make an offer and everything's <laughs> going to work out. Not in this economy, yeah. not in any economy. There's always going to be competition out there. And if like, I mean, just recently we lost Kobe Bryant, his whole entire philosophy was he was going to outpractice you. He was going to outplay you. Uh, and, and I'm not trying to out mom anybody for sure, but I am trying to be what is, you know, the best I can be. And you can't do that by this phony baloney balance thing. Yeah. yeah I need sleep. You need sleep. We all need sleep. Are we going to get it? <laughs> but the, the concept of balance to me is just kind of, I threw that away a long time ago. Yeah. I, 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 threw, yeah. <laughs> I had to learn that because for years I was just trying to like find this balance thing. I was like, I'm going to do Miracle Morning. I have, I'm doing 75 hard. I'm, I'm like trying to like pretend I don't have postpartum I didn't, yeah. you know, all these things that mothers go through while we're trying to create these amazing empires and lives for our family. And really, we just got to kind of give ourselves cre credit and embrace the unbalance. Well, no. So you, you said so many things in that last, that last sentence there, or, or a couple of sentences. Uh, first of all, you and 75 hard. Whoa. Like, <laughs> I watch your, I watch your videos and I go, yeah, I made it to like day 50. <laughs> you tried though. That's huge. I did. And as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to augment 75 hard to fit my own crazy, whatever. Um, but, uh, you said something interesting about postpartum and I don't know how many new moms out there are watching this, but I, I never, I didn't, I don't really think I had postpartum with the first two kids but my third kid, it, and I think this is something like, I didn't have it in the, like the way that you think, like I was all bluesy. I was super angry. Mm. I got really aggressive with people and, um, and I didn't even understand that that was what postpartum was. I suddenly became like this really ultra amazing lawyer in the way that you don't want to be an ultra, a female ultra amazing. Like in other words, I would just argue with people and I knew I would win because I had like skills that were like untapped and I used them for evil purposes. And so- um, You're gonna laser beam them. Yeah, oh, I did. I wrote like nasty letters. I wrote some of the greatest nasty letters I've ever written. And, and at the time I, I thought I was doing the right thing. And then I stopped breastfeeding and like the fog lifted and I became like, Oh, I'm not that angry anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my story is I did have postpartum. I just didn't know it because I was yeah, like, that's exact. I didn't know I had it until it was over. Yeah. yeah. Until, until finally uh, Jason, Jason, my husband was just like, okay, Peely, you have to get out of the house. You have to take a shower. Um, and then I'm going to put you in this mastermind, this, this real estate mastermind. Cause as soon as I got pregnant, we decided to go into real estate. And all of a sudden, like we were doing all the things, having babies, making, flipping homes, yeah, doing multifamily. So he was like, this mastermind's great. You're going to go into it and it's going to jumpstart. And it was exactly what I needed. It was exactly what I needed. I ended up paying like, I don't know, a huge sum of money to join this like upper level mastermind, which I learned a lot from. But I credit that mastermind and that my mentors there for actually bringing me, me out of my fog. Wow, so. that that's crazy. And, and and did you not realize it until you were like coming out of it that you were in it? Or yeah. I didn't wow. realize until one day I, I like I was like, wait a minute, I'm actually like happy. I wasn't not happy. Right. <laughs> Plus, as a mom, you don't want to admit that you're not happy when you like for, have your first kid because of course you're supposed to be happy, right? Right. You're right. Supposed to be hunky dory, and you know I can talk about how breastfeeding sucked too, but. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I mean, this is what ladies back to you. This is what mothers go through. Like, and don't be afraid to get out there and ask for help. Yeah. It took my husband noticing that I wasn't the same. I mean, we're never going to be the same after we have children, but I wasn't like taking care of myself how I used to. For Jillian, she stopped breastfeeding. All of a sudden she went from like mega, mega amazing bad lawyer to mega amazing good lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't, it was just more like my anger was gone. I didn't feel the need to fight with people. Like I was just fighting with people because I could like, you know, and, 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 and no one, fortunately, I didn't fight with anybody that, um, actually care about. <laughs> I fought with like mostly strangers That's awesome. and it still wasn't like a good, a good feeling. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't love it. Um, and, I, I, I wish I, I wish I recognized it at the time. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I feel for, for a lot of new moms out there who just have no idea, you know, what, what to do next. Like, I don't know what to do next. I have this child, but I'm so angry or I'm so sad or I'm so whatever. Or I so don't want to do anything. Um, that's, that's a hard thing to deal with. I know. Well, they definitely have to find that one thing that's going to pull them out for you. It was, it was quitting breastfeeding. Yeah. For me, it was finding a mentor. Who was that? You got to tell us who was the mentor. Well, I joined seven figure flipping with Justin Williams at the time. Okay. And Jason and I were flipping and wholesaling at the time. So I was up leveling that side of the business. And we were also, we also started in multifamily. Mm -hmm. um, it was the women in that group. That oh, wow. Out. They didn't like, they didn't know it at the time, but just being so close, I mean, I, via the internet, being yeah. so close to these women helped me to know that what I was feeling was okay mm -hmm. and that it was okay to be successful and work. And I did not have to have my child at my side the whole time. I could take him to daycare. I could be without him. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to be like, like breastfeeding and working on like analyzing a property at the same time. So it, it was <laughs> yeah, you could do one thing at a time. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, yeah. I didn't have to do both. <laughs> so yeah. So it's funny because my, with the third child mm -hmm. who, um, is just like such my little love. Oh God, that kid, that kid is the one kid who will like, I come home from work and he wants to hug me. He wants to sit on the lap. He wants to cuddle me. The other two were never like that at all. So I, that kid, Oh, he's my, he, he's like my little friend. He's my buddy. Um, but he, um, he, at five days after he was born, I was so bored that oh. I took him and I put him under my desk at work because he was sleeping all the time. You know, the kid, they sleep. Yeah. So I, I took him to work and let him sleep right under my desk. And then if I wanted to go uh, breastfeed, I just went into another room and shut the door and he and I'd hang out in there and come back up and put him right back under the desk. So we have similar stories with my second child, my girl. That's what I did. Cause I started ramping up my, uh, my residential real estate. I was, I'm, I was a real estate agent or I, I still am, but I was really ramping that side up. You know, we were doing all the things. I took her to the office. I would sit her next to me and she would be sleeping. And if I needed to breastfeed, I would actually go into the broker's office. Who is the woman? <laughs> and she said, just bring her to, just bring her in. You, you, you make the company more money when you're, when you're here. <laughs> <laughs> so I would just bring her and I would breastfeed her and it was all good. So ladies who, and gentlemen, but ladies, if you're listening to this, this is, we're trying to give you the permission to succeed any way that you can find for yourself. So yeah. for me, it's different. For Jillian, it's different. Find that that works for you. But I want to go back to something else that you said, Jillian, about creating a support system. Yeah. Because so many women out there, we think, or and men, entrepreneurs, we all think that we can do it ourselves. You and can't. Does that, does that work? No. 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 And, and by the way, especially as somebody like, uh, you know, I, I'm the oldest of five, actually the guy running this whole seven webinar right now is my, my younger brother, Tim. He's the youngest of the five <laughs> and he's part of my great, he's part of my great support system. She can't see you, Tim. You're, uh, I, I can pretend he, looked, to be, he looked back at you as if he was saying, <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, <laughs> he's getting mad at me. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, I have, but, I have, I'm the oldest of uh, three. I have two younger siblings. Yeah. So and I make so they're, they're like a lot be, being the oldest, I feel like, I think there is something to birth order, especially now that I have my own kids. Mm -hmm. You, you think you can do everything yourself. I went for years. I mean, I still learn, like, sometimes you need to ask for help. Sometimes you have to say, yes, I need you to do this. Um, and yeah, sometimes it is easier to do things yourself, but you can't always do things yourself. Um, like a perfect example is the minute I gave up the bookkeeping to, of my office is the minute it got done. <laughs> yes. I remember that feeling too. <laughs> like, oh yeah, yeah, I know how to do it. I shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> So get, start giving things up. Don't be afraid to like pay money for, for good work. Um, and you know, my, um, the, uh, a guy who's worked for me the longest, he's worked for me since, uh, 2008. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, he still works for me and, and he is, he's great. I mean, all my, like everybody here is, is awesome. We've, we have some really great people and like a lot of it, uh, there's, I think there's two, there's two sides to it, right? You got to treat people really, really well mm -hmm. and support them. And, and, and hopefully in doing that, they'll, they'll be supportive of you. Um, for sure. So, so, uh, and, and if you have that, God, you can get so much more done. You can start building empires at that point. You mean, so you're, you mean you don't have to do it all alone, ladies. Mm -hmm. I hope you're listening to this. You don't have to do it all alone whether it's motherhood, whether it's your business, ask for help. I know yeah. I have a problem with that. So follow Jillian's advice on that. Ask for help. Find the right people for your team. Find the right people that do the things that you don't want to do, you don't need to do, or that you'd rather not do. Does right. And, and I think there's a, perf there's a thing here. There's things I want to do. Mm -hmm. It's just I'm not the best person to do them. So I shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. And that's a hard thing to, that's a very hard thing to learn. So, yeah. I just thought of a question I'd like to ask you. I haven't asked any mom about this yet. So can you tell, can you tell me of a time that motherhood and your business kind of came to head? Oh, that's probably at least once a week. <laughs> it's, you know, it's when I'm, you know, I'm in the middle of conversation with my child and I go, I just got to take this phone call. So yeah, I mean, uh, like to, to talk about like a very specific situation. Oh, I'll give you a really good one though. Um, so when I first started doing public speaking, mm -hmm. my, uh, and my, and, and my first son was about seven months old, I would take him and my husband with me because I felt like that's what I needed to do. That's what I should be doing. And this would be wonderful. And we'd be all together and blah, 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 blah. And, um, I remember coming back into the hotel room, um, with my husband there and my, my son and him saying to me, you want to go out and do public speaking engagements and travel for business and, and, and all of that stuff. That's fine. But you leave me and the kids at home. Do not shove us into a hotel room. I'd much be more comfortable at home where I know the environment and we have what we need and we're not stuck in a hotel room while you're off, you know, doing your speaking engagement. That doesn't work for me. So that was a very hard lesson to learn. Now, the kids are a little older. Um, you know, my oldest is 12 and my, my middle child is nine. And so they're a little more self-sufficient and they can help my husband out with the younger one. Um, and but still I have to, I have to balance that and monitor that and say, we only go to exotic locations like Mexico. Like yeah. I'm not going to take them to Dallas. <laughs> no. <laughs> they, no, it's no offense to Dallas. I know you're very exotic, but <laughs> no, I, that's something I had learned the hard way too. Cause I thought to myself, well, if we're going to go speak at these places, we're going to bring everybody. Like the last time I saw you actually where yeah. we met for the first time. Was yes. It? Oh yeah. And you brought your parents. I brought, I actually, flew my parents over to watch our kids so Jason and I could both speak at this conference. And it actually yeah. worked out so well because my parents got to hang out with the kids and take them out and see Colorado. So that worked out. But there have been times, like what you said, where like at the first speaking engagement, I remember Jason was actually speaking and we just kind of tagged along. And it was horrible because <laughs> we were just 
and the kids were super young and we were just in the in the hotel room and we could, I could I couldn't take them out anywhere because it was February and it was too cold to take two kids. Right. No, and the other thing is too people I moms I hate to bring this I, like as much as an adorable as you think your kids are no one at a business meeting thinks they are. <laughs> So you can't, like, don't take them, like, with you. Like, no one wants your kids coming to dinner with us. They don't care. Um, and it's really hard to remember that when you're a mom and you want to be with them, but not everybody else wants to be with them. <laughs> And you think you're bad when you're making the right decision. Oh yeah, no, you're not doing right by anybody. When you're a mom, be a mom, and when you're when you're doing your thing, do your thing. But don't don't try to mix church with state. On no. <laughs> so, ladies, the the information here is once you start really ramping up your businesses and you start talking and you start getting out there and really getting your information out there and people start inviting you to workshops to speak. Don't bring your family unless you have a sitter to watch them the entire time. In right. Fact, it's actually better for you if you don't. Uh, Jason and I are actually, we're both going to go to a conference, bring everybody, but we just decided not to. And we're, I'm, I, I'm actually going to send him because it doesn't make any sense because you can't do the networking. You go to these things for the networking, right? Right. And if no, you, you can't because you're worried about getting back to the hotel room, um, check on the kids and make sure they're okay. Um, I, you know, most of the time I leave my stuff in a hotel room for too long. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be doing that to my kids. No. Um, you know, I don't, I, you, you just, you just got to make sure that you're, uh, when you're focused on whatever you're doing at that time, whether it's, you know, your kid's soccer game or the conference you're at. Um, a super hard lesson to learn um, and and take it from both of us mm -hmm. you know we we know we've done it we've already made the mistake just keep them separate I love that just get in there be over focused if you're working then work if you're mothering yeah. then mother of course the two are going to collide at some point and you will figure it out at that point embrace the imbalance so Jillian I know you embrace have to the imbalance I love that oh my god that's gonna be the title of this <laughs> that, that, that is gonna be the title embracing the Im unbalance so <laughs> two things before I let you go Jillian because I could talk to you all day long like I said <laughs> ladies this is my girl crush you guys can't have her she's mine <laughs> <laughs> two things I want you to talk a little bit about your book before I let okay. you go and then yeah. and give give my audience just some quote or something that you're living your life by right now um okay quote my favorite quote is um just remember you're much stronger and braver than you think you are which is um from Winnie the Pooh Love it. I love that one. And I, I, I probably didn't do it word for word correct, but the, the gist of that is something I tell my children all the time, especially my oldest. It, just remember you're, you're much stronger and braver than you think you are. And, um, and I think that apply, I'm going to cry at that one. Like, I love that quote. And you're, so then my book, <laughs> which you can probably see over here, yes. crowdfunding myth. Um, I'm going to ask you guys, I'm going to say something really, really weird. Please don't buy it. Oh. <laughs> there's my I'm first of all number one I, I I'm writing a new book okay and that's going to be out in a in a little bit and then and the second reason is is because it's it's a little out of date uh the information in it is really really good uh there's some really great stories in there and there's some really great advice but some of the law information is is slightly out of date it hasn't been updated i don't want and it's only ten dollars on amazon but i don't want you buying it and being disappointed in that fact um so what i'd prefer to do is that anybody who wants it i'm happy to give it to them um, I'll send it to them. So uh, just let me know. Just just reach out to me. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, I'm gonna okay, have reach out for you to you. Yeah, just send an email of that says in the subject line book to crowd at crowdfundinglawyers.net, and we'll we'll get you a copy of the book. And so in the subject line, just put book, and we'll send it to you. And all I ask in return is that you do go to Amazon and review it That's after awesome. you you've uh, read it. If, if you would be so kind, I would be very grateful for that, but please don't buy it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing. I think <laughs> don't, don't spend in. the $10. Wait for my new book to come out and you can buy that one. <laughs> so everybody out there, get on Amazon and don't buy this book. 
<laughs> review it though. <laughs> yeah, review it. Though. When After you read it, don't give me a fake review. I want a real one. <laughs> your, your new book will be out. Um, I'm hoping in a couple of months, actually, I, I'm working, I'm working with someone right now to, to write it. I'm super excited about this book because it's gonna, it's not just going to talk about the legal aspects of raising private capital, but it's also going to talk about how to do it. And it's going to be a much longer book than this one. Um, and we're, and I, it's called, it's called private money rock star. So I'm going to nice. teach you how to be a rock star when raising capital. Talk about being a rock star. <laughs> Tell us about your mentorship program. And then oh, like yeah. Uh, oh, thank you so much for asking. Um, yeah, we have a program called Private Money Rockstar. If you're, it, whether you're in the throes of raising capital right now or you're, you're going to do your first deal or you're doing your 10th deal or you're not anywhere near ready to raise capital, go to Private Money Rockstar to learn how to do it. Um, because no matter what stage you're in, you're going to find something useful. Like, for example, uh, if, if, you're, if you've been doing this for a while and you're thinking, I want to grow bigger and badder and better, we have how to do that, like how to do, for example, a Regulation A offering or how to start doing a, an offering where you are advertising for accredited investors and pitching to, to big investors. And then if you've never raised capital before, I'm going to tell you how to put your newsletter together what should be in it, how to, how to talk to investors when you've never spoken to them before. So privatemoneyrockstar.com if you want to go check that out. Get out there. And I know there are ladies out there, either you're just starting, you're like, oh, I don't know if I should, or you know how to do it. And I'm going to tell you, you probably don't know how to do it as well as Jillian does. <laughs> I, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, no, I, I would actually <laughs> say that's probably, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to take that compliment and tell you that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, get online, go and find Jillian, ask her for help. This is what the podcast is about. Asking for help. Get yeah. out there. Thank you. Oh, so I love giving help. So on. yeah, look, thank you so much. And, uh, and if, if anybody needs anything, I'm, I'm here to help. Thank you. So this is mothers of multifamily. Thank you again to Jillian. And thank you all my ladies out there for listening. I am so grateful. Bye now. <laughs>